from here, we're going to jump into the text to wall function, and I will also be explaining functions as we go. Where's my mouse? Be explaining functions and how to use them as we go, because I do a lot better with literal examples. So if any of you are trying to learn, this will probably be one of the better ways, in my opinion. So to start off, we need to figure out where we want it. Uh, I'm going to say at beat 10. So I'm going to type a 10 here, 10th beat of Friday colon to show that it's beat, then we're transitioning to function, and we're just gonna type text to wall. And now we have a text to wall function. That is quite simple. The next thing we want to do is we want to tell uh, scuffed walls what font we're going to use. Fonts and scuffed walls are quite literally PNGs. You can see right here. It is just all lower, the lowercase alphabet, and then the uppercase alphabet, and then like period, exclamation point, and like apostrophes. And you can make your own text file with any font you want, as long as the text is a color that is not black. So it can be red, it can be whatever, and that color, so it can be red or green, but in this case, we're just doing white. And as long as the background is black, and there is a like a space basically between them, that's how Scuffed Walls figures out what letter it is. It's just a single vertical line of, of black pixels, essentially. So this can be any resolution, it can be any size, it can, you know, it can be huge, it can be smaller than this, but this is already pretty small, so I don't know what you're doing. But you can make your own, and it's very simple. I will have these scuffed walls, you know, get linked in the description, and he has a pretty good description for that down there, so you can do it. It's very simple. If you are in the scuffed walls thing, in the additional files, there is a folder there called fonts, and I have the two that we have publicly available right now. So just go download from there, and that'll help get you started. So I'm going to use this Comic Sans.png, and what's important is we're going to open up our work in progress, the, the map folder essentially, and just drag that into the folder. So Comic Sans.png, now in this location. Um, I don't know why Windows wanted to move things, but um, we're going to copy that. So now what we can do is we can just tell Scuffed Walls where the image is so it can grab the letters to use for the font. And so all we're gonna do is we're gonna type path, which is the path to the folder. Because this is a path, it means it's telling Scuffed Walls that it is inside of the same folder as the SW file. So I can type path and then just comic sans.png. If I press save, it's not going to do anything, but you can see at beat 10, it has added a text to wall function and there's zero walls because we haven't said text. Okay. So that was path and say, for instance, you wanted to not copy the folder into your map folder or the file into your map folder every single time you can just type full path, which will let you put a full windows file directory. So full path colon, and then you can just copy the link. So we'll do D slash downloads here because I put one in there. So d slash downloads and then slash comic sans dot png. And if we save, you notice it's still working. We're going to go back to the original path here because that is, in my opinion, a better way as it's local inside the file. But you can totally just put it wherever you want and then use a full path to, to link it. So after we've put in the path or the full path, whichever you want, you're going to want to uh, type line. So line is actually where we get to put the text that scuff walls will convert into walls. So we're going to be funny. We're going to use the same example as I do in my doc. We're just going to say it's Wednesday. And that will quite literally, if I press control save here, you can see at B10, it has now added 114 walls. It has turned it's Wednesday into text. And we're going to add another line. This is how you create separate lines of text. And we'll just type my, it's, that wasn't caps. So we got to fix that. My, it's. So if we look, we save here. You can see we now have 180 walls because it has added my dudes in. So since these are on separate lines, that means that my dudes will always be like under Wednesday. So when you read it in scuffed walls, it'll literally say it's Wednesday and the next line, my dudes. So no big deal. Hopefully that made sense. There are things called letting. Letting is quite literally the space in between the letters. So like if I set the letting really high, then it would look like this. And all the letters will be weird. And I forgot that notepad. 
hates when you control Z. So we'll do that many. And so you can type letting this and then do like a thousand because it is just a number. It is defaulted to one, but um, yeah, you can change it. I don't see the need, so I'm going to leave it as it is. You can also use l l uh, leading, letting. It's kind of, you can pronounce it either way. And this is the space between lines. So if I did letting colon 10, there will now be 10 spaces. I won't know about, I don't know about that. There'll be 10 spaces between where it says it's Wednesday and my dudes. We're also going to leave that alone because I don't want to mess with that, but it is, it's pretty self-explanatory. Size is the scale of the text. This one's kind of important because it defaults to one and it's pretty big. So you can just type 0 0.1. And I mean, honestly, that should be fine. Uh, it, it makes it a bit smaller. Thick. Thick is really important. So thick is actually the border of the wall. It's like the highlighted border. So you can make it super thin or super large. And again, it is just its own scale. So you can make it whatever you want. I'm going to set it to 12 because that will allow the border to be the full thing. So the wall will all be one singular color. Duration, that is quite literally how long it will last. So we'll do it for 20 beats. So it'll end on, it starts at beat 10, and the duration is 20, so it'll end on like beat 30. And then position, this will move the text. So normally in Beat Saber, you know, the text kind of comes out, or the walls come at you and then leave. You can adjust where it will appear. Um, like what, from what place the text will pop or will, will come in. So it can happen all the way to your right or all the way to your left. I'm just going to have it appear in front of us. So not that big a deal. Okay. And um, after duration, another important thing that you can do is color. This does not work in this present version of Scuffed Walls. But um, in the future, I do believe he plans to make it so you can just use color and it will allow it. Uh, right now, it's it's linked to the the path, so the, the comic sans.png. So, like, if this text for some reason was orange, then the walls would be orange. Right now, that's what it does. Um, he's, he's fixing it later, as I said. So, uh, it, it makes no sense to use it now, because it won't work, but I can still show you what it does. And so, color is your standard um, RGB values, so red, green, blue. But instead of being 0 to 255, like it is in, like, a normal... RGB color wheel, it is from 0 to 1. If I just pull up an RGB color picker here, and I just go all the way red. Right? That means it is essentially the RGB values will be 255, 0, and 0. Now, because Scuffed Walls does not go to 255, it does 0 to 1. The way you would type all the way red, it would be bracket 1, comma, 0, comma, 0, uh, end bracket. I don't know what these are called, so we're going to just call them brackets, too. Uh, obviously, it doesn't work. Whatever. If you wanted to, for some reason, make it a different color, say this, like, let's get, like, a tealish blue, you would base essentially divide everything by 255 and then take the decimal. So, like, for the red here, we would say 9 divided by 255, whatever that is. This number, um, you can probably go specific, but, like, 0.03, that's, I would guess, close enough, maybe 0.035. And then 227 divided by 255, and you just you get the decimal points, you divide by 255 to get a, a less than one. I think you understand. Uh, again, this doesn't work, so we're going to leave it out. But that is the essentials to doing just text to wall. We're going to go over some animate positions, so I can show you how to make it stand still and stuff. But that, that's, the, that's the, the gist of it. We're going to save it here, so now you can see. And then we will just launch Beat Saber, so I will be right back. Okay, so now we're in Beat Saber, and we have sound turned off. You can use the WDA, WASD keys to, to walk around. See, I can move and just mouse to change your position. Um, and so we'll just go here, work in progress, and we're going to launch Friday. There we go. And um, it's kind of, kind of broken right now. I don't know how to fix that. That generally doesn't happen, so let's move back some. We should see some text up here. Okay, we can try the next difficulty, no big deal. So we'll try clicking expert here, practice, play. In theory, it should say it's Wednesday, my dudes. There it is. And it moves by because it's obviously just a wall. 
but um, that proves that this works. And that's all you need, really, if you just want to have floating walls. We're now going to go into getting some animate, def uh, animate definite position and some, some animation for colors, because obviously we like colors. So let's, we're already in our document, actually. So all we can do is we'll literally go here and we're going to use the animate definite position animate definite position uh, function. So animate definite. Let me make sure I spell it right because I'm sure if I don't, it will tell me. Definite position colon and the animate definite position is a new extension thing. It just lets the wall uh kind of like just stay in its own position. So if you have seen um, if you have seen the dark side wall map, for example, that one uses animate definite position to get the fall into the dark side text, I believe. So that's how that's a good example of what it does. Um, I'm going to show you how to use it now. So the way it works is it's kind of similar to color in terms of formatting where it's brackets and then the rest. And the way it works is it is X, Y, Z. And then the most important ones, I'm just going to give you the four is T. So it's your X coordinate, your Y coordinate, your Z. So your left and right, your up and down, and then how far or close it is, and then T, which is time. That's kind of important because you're animating. If you know keyframes, you're essentially writing a keyframe here. Or that's how I like to think of it. So our X, I kind of like it in the middle, so we can just do zero. For a Y, let's move it up to five, so it's a bit above. And then we'll push it back, say, we'll just do, we'll do 10. We'll have it kind of far back. And then time, we can just do a zero. And if we close this and we save, go into VSaber, let's try that. And then we might just have to give it a specific animation I'm in. So actually we probably do. Nope, there we go. So that will stay there for the full 10 beats or the full 20 beats, I think. And as you can see, it is quite literally floating there. Yep. 20 beats and it just gets out of there. So that's how you would do it. And we can even animate this so we can say here, do a comma, new bracket, and let's have it go left to right. So it'll start at zero. It will go over, we'll say 10. We'll keep the height the same, 10. And then T is interesting. T is time. This is important now that we're in animate positions. It's kind of complicated. It's pretty hard to understand because everything's going to change with um, jump speed and half note jump speed and half jump speed. I'll be honest, I don't fully understand it, but this is a beginner tutorial. So we're just kind of going to go off roughness 0.5 half ish. And then oh, you want to make sure that's a 0 0.5 because it is like a float and um, JSON stuff. I don't know, but make sure it's a 0 0.5. That should roughly be half, and then we'll do negative 10, 5, 10, and then 1. So in theory, what will happen is it'll start in the middle where my mouse is. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll just see my mouse. It will go, the text will go left and by 10, and then we'll go right by 10. Or it might go right by 10 and left. I, have, I don't know the exact coordinate angle, so we can show save there. Check it out on BeatSaver. So let's check it out. There we go. Okay, so it's going to go right 10. And then because the animation... Oh, I just... Uh, function 2. Sorry, let me pause it. Because the animation... Let me bring it up here. The, the thing is the duration is 20 beats. That means that 0 is the first beat that it comes in. 25 will be 10 beats in. And then one will be the 20th beat right as it ends, if I hope that makes sense. So let's play here. There we go. It's going to go right. And because the beat, or it's 20 beats long, that means it is naturally going to be slower. If this was like four beats, this animation would be super duper quick. It's going to get there, and then boom, it's gone. That is how the animate definite position works. Pretty cool. And it's essentially keyframing, which is very nice. It's very easy to understand if you know keyframes. Uh, the last thing I'm going to show you is just something that can be nice. Is let's see here. Is I will show you. This is going to take advantage of color. Let me make sure I can 
use the right thing. Okay. So we're going to be a bit lazy here, but I just want to show you how you can animate colors. So we can do type animate color. And then we're just going to paste this in. This is an RGB value. So you can see it changes it from one zero zero one zero. That's kind of like alpha stuff. I don't fully understand the last bit with colors because that is, it's like time and E, whatever the heck he is, that's beyond the scopes of this. But if we press control save, what it will do is it will do rainbow colors essentially. Um, and you can even have it technically just ha have it animate one color zero. So if I want it to be red, I could kind of just delete all of this and it would stay whatever that first color is, but that's unimportant. So save that in the scuffed walls, launch beat saber. We should have some rainbow colors. Look at that. And it's going to end on white. And because this is 20 beats long, the last thing where it's all the way over here will be white because it's same same type of animation. Look at that white and we're gone. And that is how you animate colors using the animate colors function. It's incredibly simple. This is just me being lazy and not typing it manually, but it is essentially you're typing the code comma and then the next or the, the, Colors and then comma the next colors and when you want it to happen it is the same as using animate definite position That's why I'm just being a bit lazy with it because if you understand how to do coordinates with definite It's the same thing, but using the color values And I do believe that should be everything you need to know about the text wall function to get started using it You can use other custom like chroma data and you can use just custom data things you can use tracks and you can make it fake. We can do the fake. This is very cool because it's just a Boolean, which means it can only be true or false. So we can literally type true. And this means in theory, if you like went into the wall for some, somehow, if you went to the wall, it wouldn't break your combo. So it's pretty neat. And you can just do a bunch of things like that. Just look in the dock. You can have it rotate, do all sorts of stuff. So that's pretty cool. Um, let me know if you have any questions. You can DM, DM me uh, at there's a Snuggie 2634 on Discord. You can DM the light designer. No big deal. Um, you know, just feel free to ask questions. Those are the most important thing. Hope this helped you out. And uh, yeah.